Hi guys, I'm Dr. Hans and this is my YouTube channel about beer and home brewing. Today we're gonna do a grain to glass video, so we're gonna see the brew day and of course taste to see the beer and I'm also gonna run through the recipe of the like Swedish, Belgian-ish blonde I made. So here on my channel, if you're new here, you can expect grain to glass videos like this one or beer and gear reviews. And uh, I do a lot of experimental videos and DIYs and more. So if that sounds interesting to you, consider becoming a subscriber and do hit that little bell so you get notifications when I post a video like this one. And of course, a thumbs up goes a long way. So I have the beer here in my keyser, so we're gonna pour it. Uh, and then we can go through the brew footage and uh, of course come back and taste it. And yeah, go through the recipe if one of you guys will want to try to brew it yourself at home. So another cap on than usual. I, it's, we're cold in here, it's like 12 degrees Celsius. Only I'm uh, fermenting a beer at 15 C using my heat only control system. I have a video on that, so I'm gonna put a card up. But if you stay to the end, I can show you in this video as well. But in this key, sir, I have a. Let me show you. Okay, in the key, sir. We have some beers here, and this is the one we want. I'm gonna put some more gas on it, I think. That will be fine. Also, while I'm on it, I have a video as well where I review the mini cake, so I can put a card to that as well. We're yeah, nice, I have two of them. Hoping to get some more. Okay, so let's pour the beer. Label out, so, just kidding. <sighs> Beer's pouring nicely. Quite carved. Okay, here you have the beer. Have a flashlight ready, the recipe ready. Uh, but before we uh, taste it, let's have a look at the brew day. Okay, this is five kilos of a Boulder Pilsner malt, but uh, don't just go adding five kilos if you're copying this recipe. Wait to the end and I will explain it, because this is a quite special malt. So five kilos of a Boulder Pilsner malt, uh, 250 grams of uh, wheat malt, and 150 grams of acid malt for pH adjustment, and 100 grams of Cara Munich. Two. Let's get this crushed. I stopped and said it the uh, first time I used the uh, Balder Pilsner malt. And I'm gonna stop and say it again, because uh, I really believe that it's 
very hard to crush the Valde Pilsen malt. Uh, it produces a fine crush, but uh, it takes real time. So I think it's like that extra hard or extra thick shell on it. Yeah, side note, let's get crushing again. Mash temp is, call it strike water, up to 71C. I'm gonna start this at about 66. Let's do something a little bit different today. So it's empty. Let's do like an underlit thing. So I'm just gonna like pour all, see if I can rig something up really quickly for you guys. I can do that. Okay, we're all rigged up, I think. This is gonna be a really shitty video. So, yeah, it's gonna pour everything. No, oh, I'm getting brewer's lung. So, everything in there. And, uh, okay, grains are in. Then we will just lower it. And now, I think I can bring you guys back. But, okay, grains are in. And just lower it. And, yeah, we're underletting. So, it can be done with this sort of system also. So the grains are slowly sucking up the liquid. And I think the whole idea with, with this that you really shouldn't uh, get any like dough balls. So should we try something uh, like an ex experiment? Of course we should, always. So let's just Let's not stir this. Just gonna try to get the grains to suck up all of the water. It's just like floating on top. Okay, we're starting to see some water there. Can it be done? Or do I need to poke it with a mesh pedal? The idea was uh, the experiment idea was that we would just start the circulation and uh, then in about 50 minutes if it worked we're gonna give it a stir and see if we got any dough balls really from not stirring it at all yeah let's try hook up the circulation start it and see what happens can bring some water over here on top. Yeah. The worst thing that will happen is that uh, I don't know, get a stuck mesh. The worst thing that can happen is that I have to stir it. So let's just try it. I will hook the circulation up now. You don't need to see that. Okay, circulation is hooked up. I haven't started it yet. Um, yeah, so, as you see, the grains are starting to soak up the liquid. Uh, I'm gonna start this. I haven't made any sexier solution to this yet. I will make it. This works fine, but it's uh, not that sexy. Might I might poke some holes in there as well. Don't have any like sharp objects on me. No. Um, I will do it later. So this is just so that the uh, 
circulation yeah the wort which gets circulated from this hose doesn't yeah, just like dig a hole in the uh, malt bed so I want the wort coming up on top so this is set to 66C I'm gonna start this this is okay Okay, pumps going too fast. Of course, I have to reduce the rate. Okay, so we're actually now circulating water. So this is, it has some color already. So circulating water on top of the, the grains. This is just a stupid idea, but it's fun. <laughs> no, this is not the way to do it. This is just an experiment. Okay, got my hands on a sharp object. I'm just gonna poke some holes in this. You see, I told you this was just a like stupid idea. Not the whole idea, just like the last bit where I didn't like stir but I want to see this through the experiment so I'm gonna pump up some uh, I'm gonna raise the uh, flow rate not sweet yet let's put some uh, maybe not overdo it okay at least now everything is soaked. Now we can lower the flow rate again. Not that much. You always want to control the outside so you don't uh, let the pump go dry. Okay, so I'm gonna just let it be now for uh, about 15 minutes or so. I'm gonna come back and take a pH temperature. If this had, hadn't been with the uh, like Boulder Pilsner malt, which is kind of special, I would just leave it. But uh, this time we're gonna do like a check on it. Otherwise, I know my um, efficiency. I usually get 78%. Uh, from a normal like barley beer with this system The way I do it, so I know my efficiency, but the boiled malt is quite special. So I'm Doing like the figures on it uh, From the last brew, so I don't want to add that kind of extra experiment to this brew, but we can use this experiment this time to see if we have any dough balls dough, to see if we have any dough balls after like 50 minutes of circulation when it's time to take the pH 20 minutes in doesn't look right um, this was I wouldn't say like a stupid idea maybe I should just have gone like faster so that because we're having a really good run through the uh, grains, so I will try this again, but with another beer, which ain't with this malt. It's a very, very loose malt bed. But let's see if we have any dough balls. If you see, no dry spots at all. So I don't think it's a very bad idea. I don't like this. Uh, getting much air into the malt at this stage, but we had to look, didn't we? So I think it's a quite good idea. 
but it needs some trimming so next time I do it I will do it with the, the malt which I know better than this malt and uh, yeah we will see if we get an efficiency drop down I don't think that we will actually Okay. Ah! Had an accident! Okay, let's start the. Not that fast. Let's start the pump again. This is gonna be one of those like bad videos. Um, I took a sample. I'm gonna check the pH now. Ugh. Need to go some need to do some shopping as well so I'm gonna like, leave it now for at least another hour maybe longer one on one and a half maybe I don't know so, pH 5.3 good but uh, let's adjust some like uh, not much this will hardly do like anything it's like a third of a cup something like that why not it's always I wouldn't need to 5.3 is excellent so you're aiming for something like 5.2 in the 5.3 range somewhere but yeah I just brought it out so I don't know why I used it okay Watching. And this is like 78 degrees of water with pH of 6. About 6, to be honest. So I'm gonna sparge up to 20. Like eight liters, some hair, maybe some more. You know, let it drain off in this one. We can add some more. <coughs> okay, and uh, meanwhile, we're heating up. As you see, it's starting to lose some light. Uh, the mold pipe are draining off here, and I did spot it a little bit more so we get a few liters more maybe but that's of course very thin wort uh, temperature starting to reach boiling any minute now time to skim because I'm a skimmer and why do I do that because this looks nasty and I like to remove it. You don't have to skim your beer. But I will want to get rid of the dark foam which always forming on top. Because I want it to look neat. I'm a skimmer, I'm a skimmer, I'm a skimmer, I'm a skimmer. Skimming the beer, the wart, sorry. Skimming the wart, skimming the wart. Look, much prettier. So, as you see, we're almost at boil, so we're gonna, we're gonna have to watch it now. I'm gonna skim some more as it forms. 
Um, don't want a hot break. Have a deformer. Let's add a few drops. One, two, three, five ish, maybe. That's like more than the bottle says, but I don't think it will hurt the beer. Let's give that a stir. We can just like hear what that's doing with the the foam. See, it really takes the foam out of it. Oh, it's very dark now. I've been boiling for like 30 minutes, so now it's time for the first hop addition. I'm gonna do a 60 minute boil from here. That's 10 grams of Mandarin and Bavaria. Let's start the timer. I'm also adding some candy sugar to this. Uh, I had 50 grams of like light color and uh, I took also 50 grams of dark color to give the beer some color more. It won't do much. Uh, this is just totally 100 grams, so it's not really a big deal. And I was just thinking uh, I could just drop this into the hop spider and it would, would uh, dissolve fine. So I'm gonna do that. But it's so dark outside, so I don't know if you can see anything. We're like uh, 30 minutes into the boil. You can't see shit. I dropped everything into the hop spider. Um, the idea is that if I would have dropped it down, it would have, uh, yeah, in the kettle, all the, the sugar would have settled down in the bottom and maybe scorched but this way it sh should uh, dissolve fine okay 50 minutes yeast nutrient and uh, finings Prostaflok. five minutes left in goes 30 grams of mandarina bavaria Okay guys, there was some brew footage for you. So here's the final product. So we're gonna taste it. See if I can show you it. We have a beautiful looking dark yellow two finger, nice tight head. Uh, it has a little bit of haze on it. Uh, when I shine through it, it's almost like some lemonish tones to it but i bet that's the light because it's a little bit blue light so yeah disregard that so beautiful looking beer let's give it a nose mm. you do get the the esters up the front don't know if i can find uh, any hops you have like a spicy, earthy esterness there. Not like a saison spice. And, and you get a little hint of uh, also that uh, vice defining. Not so much banana really, but the other tones you get from that. I, I don't really talk about clothes here, but maybe a bit so you do get that like belgian estuary thing head still some but dying off okay so like a spicy earthy esterness so uh, small hints of banana okay let's dive in cheers guys
It is a little bit cold, I must say. Sorry about that. Should have uh, warmed it up maybe a bit. But it's quite dry. Of course, you always have some sweetness, but it's a really dry beer. Medium mouthfeel. Um, and esters qu quite sharp on the tongue. Don't know any better way to say it. Um, even get some ash. Small hint of banana. Have some malt breadiness there. Really nice beer. You have a, a good amount of bitterness to it, but uh, it's not really about any like hop aroma, so much about hop taste. Um, it's more the esters coming from the yeast together with the uh, bread from the, uh, from the malt some sweetness and a good level of uh, bitterness to it. So it turned out a really nice beer. If I should could complain about anything. I would like a little bit more banana in, uh, in this blonde. Just like a, a hint more. It's a beautiful looking beer, really good beer, guys. Let's look at the recipe. This was, like I said, brewed with the uh, the ester from from KG. I'm gonna put a card up to the video where I talked about the uh, the yeast. I had a yeast competition giveaway because I was sent the yeast for free, two bottles. So I. Uh, uh, gave one away in a competition and um, I also used the uh, Boulder Pilsner malt, the Swedish old style malt and I have a video where I talk about that as well so I can put a card up to that and you, of course you find uh, links down below also down below there's links to the glass and uh, yeah like stuff I use in here and for brewing and yeah it's a lot of links cheers all equipment in the links are proved by the doctor, of course. Uh, yeah, the recipe. This recipe you can find on my Patreon site as well in the Dr. Hans recipe book. I have over 100 recipes in the Dr. Hans recipe book now, so uh, it's really growing. And I also put beer mail recipe in there as well, so you can go and check the recipes and have a look at the videos. So. Uh, there's most of my recipe, of course, but there's a lot of recipes, guys. And uh, this recipe is in the uh, Saison and Belgian beers. It's called Esther Boulder Belgian Blonde in that place. Don't know what I'm gonna call it in the video, but you guys know because you see in the thumbnail, of course. So, for the Esther Boulder Belgian Blonde, I used, I'm gonna go through the, uh, the recipe in metric, but I'm gonna give you the percentage as well. Um, and percentage is the best way to, uh, to share recipes. because so Then you can just add in your own efficiency. I used five kilos of uh, Boulder Pilsen malt, and that's 89 percentage. I used 250 grams of wheat malt, that's 4.5%. I used 150 grams of acid malt, that's 2.7%. Uh, acid malt is for adjusting the pH, so that's with my water I'm playing around with, so you have to calculate that for yourself. You can always go a little bit lower with the acid malt and then correct it with the 
lactic acid, for example. I use 100 grams of Caramunich 2 for some color. I also use some candy sugars in this one. Very small amount of candy sugar. I wanted to use a little bit dark candy sugar because I wanted a little bit of color on it. I have actually in here another blonde, so we're gonna go through that in the near future also. And that turned out a little bit too light in color. So I wanted to use the candy sugar um, to give it a little bit of color and then I just use some uh, uh, light candy sugar as well. Uh, candy sugars are used, <sighs> sugars really are used to light up the beer, bump up the uh, ABV without making a sweet beer, without making a heavy beer, so you get better uh, attenuation and uh, still a little bit higher in alcohol but I didn't want this to be like super high in alcohol so I just added some of the dark candy sugars for for color and uh, the light just for the heck of it because it's a Belgian blonde and yeah I just thought I was supposed to put sugar in there so I wanted to do that for fun Yes, the other one I have has more sugars in it really. With 50 grams of clear sugar and 50 grams of dark sugar, that's just under 1% each of the grain bill. And for hops, I this was a no-shill brew. I haven't done a video on no-shill, maybe I should do that. You have to think about your hop additions really when you're doing no-shill. But I have a suggestion in here in the recipe if you want to brew it like normal. But I use 10 grams of Mandarina Bavaria at 60 minutes, 8.5% uh, alpha acid and use 30 grams of Mandarina Bavaria at 5 minutes. If you were gonna do this the uh, like normal cooling way, uh, you could use 12 grams at 60 minutes and 25 grams at 15 minutes instead. It's all in the recipe. The OG of this one was 1046 and it's fermented out to 1010, which gave us an ABV of 4.7%. So there you have the recipe guys. And as I said, recipe also in the Dr. Hans recipe book on my Patreon site. So really nice beer. And of course, thanks to uh, Carl Yuan for giving me the, the G's to try out and thanks to Varro Kvarn for uh, giving me the boulder malt. They do also have like pale ale boulder, I think. I hope I can convince them to, to send me one of those bags as well in the future. So, okay, guys, beer turned out really great. Try the recipe out. Uh, so I, I could have a little bit more banana, but this is a really nice, refreshing drink. 4.7%, so it's a quite sessionable beer. But what you could do to this recipe is to either ferment it hotter. I started at 17, which is um, quite low ale temperature, so you could bump up the temperature quite a lot. See if that would give you more banana. Maybe the um, esters would dominate even more, so I don't know what would happen. What you also could do is to make a, a yeast blend. So this would pair very nicely with the, like uh, Weistefan and yeast, the, uh, or the WLP300, which might be actually the same thing. So a mix between them. Yes, you can mix yeast, take what you want from one yeast and take uh, what you want from another and, and yeah, blend them together. It's fun. Okay, so I guess that's it for, for that. But um, we, I promise you that we're gonna look at the fermentation system, the fermentation I have going right now. But um, 
If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel and uh, yeah, want to learn more about beer and how to become a better brewer and just want to follow along with my uh, adventure in fermentation and beer, uh, do hit the subscribe button and that little bell so you don't miss anything. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. Let's have a look at the fermentation system coming up. Okay, guys, I have to sit down to... to frame the shot so it's bubbling away now and uh, I wanted to ferment this at 15 degrees to to start with it's holding at 15 see now if you can you can see it I will read it for you 15 C okay so room temp here is 12 degrees and this is holding at uh, three degrees higher than that controlled only by heat and of course the cooler environment so the temperature probe is insulated here on the side and the uh, fermenting bucket is standing on, on a heat pad and uh, some like insulation here. It's the same which I use around my kettle and uh, those used for sleeping outside in the forest or whatever. So this uh, fermentation system works really, really well if you don't have a fridge. I have a fermentation fridge. I have something in that right now. So this system works very, very well, but you have to choose your yeast and uh, according to what kind of temperature you have to play with room temperature because uh, the the cooling side of of uh, this system is only controlled by the room temp so you need to ferment a couple of degrees higher than your room temp or a lot higher because you can uh, insulate it if you want to to raise up the temp even further but in this case i'm going with 12 degrees in the room and ferment it at 15 and it's holding temperature very very good so it's it's winter now so i can do whatever i really want but when we are moving into uh, to summer and i get like 18 degrees in here or maybe even higher, then I have to pick my my yeast that works. Maybe the ester yeast which I used in this beer or you have quike yeast and the uh, saison yeast and a lot of yeast that uh, tolerates high temperature. Uh, WP644, really nice yeast. So there's a lot of uh, choices, but uh, during the year and uh, the, the, the temperature you have, you have to choose different yeast strains. But of course, winter time, I can do whatever I want. Then I wanted to start this at 15 C. So room temperature, 12 C. And this is keeping the beer fine on 15 C. If I want to bump up the, uh, the temperature, which I usually do, um, after a while, I of course can, can set this higher and I also can help by raising up the room temp a bit and uh, I have the option to insulate it also to keep the heat inside of the fermenting bucket. I think I in the first video just about this go through the system a little bit better maybe or this was better so guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a double thumbs down so guys cheers and thanks for watching dr hans out